Hi, I'm April. Welcome to Creative Conversations. Today, our conversation is with ourselves. If you like what we're doing, please hit the like button, share to others in the community, and comment. I would love to hear, I'll answer every comment, and I'd love to hear how you're doing journaling and kind of self-conversation. To all of you who are out there by yourselves, here's a virtual hug. We're out here on my porch in Burlington, Vermont. There may be some outside noises. I apologize for that. Most of us are at home alone now, some of us alone, and having a conversation and journaling is a way to um, not be alone and to, you know, express yourself through a book or a journal or your own writing um, in a way that allows you to have communication and conversation and let your ideas flow. I've set an environment that has a color palette that is soft and soothing. It's all blues and whites. I've got teacup, my favorite tea, all, all pretty things around me that are going to bring me to a, a, a delicate and thoughtful spot. When you're writing to yourself, sometimes you may be thinking of having somebody with you. Like my mom. I set a cup for her too, because she's somebody that I might want to have a conversation with or express my feelings to. So just by having her cup here, she's there with me. In terms of having company, you might want to have your cat with you or a representation of your cat. This little cat chair was my mother's when she was five years old. So I can see a little girl sitting there. And there's another version of that chair that's been made for my granddaughter. So she's kind of with me too. I am always going to have nature or representation of nature with me, particularly when I'm being thoughtful. These beautiful pansies, they just, they're part of what I want to talk about and write about and I'm inspired by. So have your notebook, but have multiple notebooks. Have one in your handbag, have one when you're traveling. I often find I have thoughts when I'm traveling, when your mind is freed up. Get the flow of your writing and your thoughts. So this, you know, is affirming who you are. So affirmations. I am April. I love art. I'm a good person. Write the things down about yourself that are going to, you know, that are part of who you are and who, who you need to be. Remember, don't judge yourself. There's no judgment in writing your own thoughts. Remember that judgment, particularly self-judgment, is the enemy of creativity. A lot of my writing and journaling is about observation, particularly in nature and um, observation of ambiance and feeling and atmosphere that I'm drawing from the place where I am. Well, I always date it and note the place and then when I look back at those journals years later it brings back a whole picture of where I was in my life at that time. It's amazing how consistent it is. We moved inside now and this is a kind of an alternate environment and color palette. You can see this is all soft pinks and ivories. It really has a very romantic and very peaceful feeling. Your environment should take you somewhere. This takes me to a very peaceful place. I want to talk a little bit about setting an environment. You can see here, you might not have a big desk that you can do all your journaling on. And so here's a way to create a feeling without having a huge piece of furniture. You can take three small tables and put them together. Three is always a good number, uneven numbers, to create um, a balance for your eye. So we have a tall, medium, and small table. This will be my main one where I keep my book and I can have my uh, teacup, I can have inspirational things. Head of Gandhi is always gonna inspire me. Really the father of India, I think of him. Flowers, this time it's dry flowers inside. A gorgeous bowl of flowers that totally reflects this color palette. So you can see that I'm keeping within the same color palette to keep that peaceful feeling and even the items that I'm using the objet I'm using are in that palette too. So the roses and flowers gathered over the winter, um, things received and kept, a few of each, are all there to remind me 
of nature. Um, there's a few books I'm going to call out that I just think, you know, you don't always have to be reading a serious novel. You don't always have to be reading uh, a thriller, though I read those all the time. Sometimes you want to bring yourself somewhere peaceful. Edward de Bono, How to Have a Beautiful Mind. Just reading that, rereading that now, I'm really enjoying it. I love rereading. If I like something, I like to read it over and over. Winnie the Pooh by A. A. Milne. I mean, full of charming illustrations, and each um, chapter has a simple thought that either makes you laugh or smile or think, hey, that's right. Winnie, he's at it again. Ruskin Bond is a well known Indian author from. I think it was the 50s or 60s, it was a, kind of the period when the British were leaving India and he has lovely stories from the hill station of a little boy and the adventures that he's discovering up in the mountains. I love it. Lots of reflections on nature too. This was a book I had as a girl, probably around eight years old. I'll be gifting that to my granddaughter one day, called The Just Mary Stories. Very, very simple stories, sweet stories, few pages each. I'm an adult, I love reading them. Trees in my forest, when my mind is too tattered from one thing or another, I'll read about nature and that's more like as a student and studying, um, well these are the trees in my forest, I'm going to learn more about them, how they bud, how they leaf out, how they flower, what is the best environment for them. And then when I do go outside and look at nature, I'll be that much more informed of what I'm seeing and when you're better informed generally in nature you're more appreciative. This is a gorgeous um, writer, uh, C. C. Van Dyck, an illustrator and artist. He does greeting cards. Um, I think he's based in British Columbia. I received this book from my sister. Each, each page is gorgeous and has whimsical drawings and paintings of creatures. And all, all fine deeds have humble beginnings. What a great way to start. What a beautiful phrase. Even small actions have the power to make a difference. And there's three little mice up to writing a letter right there, I think. So that letter you write or that note you put in your journal, that, that just might make a difference for you or even for someone else. Enjoy your day journaling. Here's a shout out to all those mums out there, and we all have mums. Sunday's Mother's Day. Let's think about all that our mothers have given us, and they've given us life, they've given us beauty, they've given us our perception of the world. We do have some, of course, Mother's Day or mums products, which can be for any time of the year. A particular favorite of mine, and which my mother loves, is um, my home it is my mother poem which we have on our tea towels and scarves this year and we have it on our metal trays and if you'll indulge me for one second I want to read it to you my home it is my mother within her heart I live her love is like no other the sunshine it does give and like the spreading branches of a truly fragrant tree my mother's heart and arms have made a perfect nest for me. Hey mom, I love you. Please like, comment, and share. I will read each and every comment and respond to it. And particularly I'd like to know what your how your journaling is going and what you're reading. Please share it.